Welcome to the channel, Survivor. I'm Traminaut. Today we're back in the deep dive series, and this time I'd like to invite you along a little tangent that I took. I did a bunch of research on endurance, and I wanted to look at weapon endurance specifically, and we we're, we're going to do that. But you know what? It got weird. Weapons got weird. And I also found lots of cool little things along the way because endurance is a huge topic. So let's take a breather on weapons for a sec, okay? We'll circle back to something I verified. I'll call it the katana effect. But for now, we'll look at the big picture. Questions like, what is endurance? How do we spend it? And how much do things cost? What impacts endurance in combat? And how can we make it last? As we go along here, I'd love to see in the comments how these numbers, uh, these topics today, uh, compare to your experience or any debug testing that you've done as well. Uh, speaking of which, big shout out to Karagom over on uh, Reddit who made a fantastic post sharing some endurance research of their own. Uh, I'm going to be referencing some of that directly today and comparing my own findings as well as adding a bit of my own as well. So big thank you to you Karagom because your post was the inspiration for this video. Okay, first things first, what is endurance? In Zomboid, we have an endurance value you can see in debug and uh, it ranges from zero to one. It lines up with the endurance Moodles like this. At 0.75 or higher, you have no Moodle. Okay, you feel good. Below 0.75 endurance though, down to 0.5, you have moderate exertion. Uh, below 0.5 to 0.25, you get high exertion. Then down uh, 0.1, you get excessive exertion. And then below that 0.1, you're just exhausted. Now, why does that matter? We've got loads of reasons. We need a table. So at the first Moodle, you lose 50% of your melee damage down to 95% damage debuff in the worst case. You're also losing 0 0.07 to 0.28 on your attack speed. Your trip chances go up by 10 to 40%. Uh, your fail chance on tall fences goes up by 5 to 20%. And your movement speed is going down by 15 to 60%. This is bad news. So to help you maintain a safe endurance level, let's talk about costs. Starting now, all the numbers we talk about are coming from tests in build 41.69 using a character with 5 fitness and no traits. But first up, have a look at movement, specifically walking, sneaking, jogging, and sprinting. Here's what I found. I'll start with walking. Walking costs you nothing. Uh, not only that, you can actually recover endurance while you walk to the tune of 0 0.003 points over 10 tiles of walking. Uh, more on that later though. So, okay, that's cool, but jogging is going to cost you 0 0.005 points, and sneak jogging will cost you more at 0 0.008 points, and sprinting will cost you six times what jogging does, coming in at 0 0.03 points. Again, all of this is measured over 10 tiles of movement, like you see sort of marked out on the tennis court here. Uh, I plugged in some pylons there for a bit of reference. Pylons for a reference. Now, remember, depending on your exhaustion level, you may be slower or faster, so crossing 10 tiles will take longer and cost you even more if if you're already exhausted. And there's something interesting about that. Walking. At full endurance restedness, walking actually costs less than your endurance recovery rate. So you gain uh, 0.003 points per 10 tiles walked. This is true at level one moderate exertion as well. Uh, once you have high or excessive exertion though, uh, even walking will cost you endurance. Okay, there are some flat movement costs though that won't cost you extra. Climbing, a low fence is always free if you press E to do it. If you sprint fault it, that'll cost you 0 0.016 points. And a tall fence too will always cost you 0 0.062 points to cross, not cheap. Okay though, so apart from walking, what else can you do to recover these points? You have ideas, but I'll tell you something, it's not what you think. Let's start with furniture, okay? I felt like I was in a Goldilocks story in this part, uh, maybe Goldilocks and the three chairs, but I had to be thorough. It seems that no matter the chair, you're going to gain back 0.32 points per minute in a chair uh, when you take the rest action. This same number goes for beds as well. And again, Goldilocks and the three beds here, all the beds, same beds. Uh, same rate. Uh, this beats standing around though, which recovers you only 0 0.108 points a minute. But get this, if you sit on the ground instead of standing on it, you will not only recover more than standing, you'll get more recovery than sitting on furniture too, because you will actually recover 0.54 points per minute, okay? Like half of your entire exhaustion if you sit on Kentucky's uh, luxurious earth. Anyone who's been to Kentucky, can you tell us, uh, is this just a true to life detail or do you think we have a bug on our hands? Okay, luxurious dirt aside though, let's move on to what got me into all this and that is combat. Bare hands first. If you push a zombie, that's gonna cost you zero points. That's right, free pushes for everyone. But if you miss, that'll set you back 0 0.003 points. So spamming shove isn't so bad, so long as your shoves connect. 
If your push, uh, push turns into a stomp session, uh, each head or body stomp will cost you 0.007 points as well. But if you hit and deal no damage, it's free. It turns out stomping legs and feet uh, has a good chance to do no damage, but that won't cost you anything uh, but time, of course. Now let's take a look uh, at our first bit of weirdness. So every now and then, pushing did cost me 0.001 points. The debugger only displays up to three decimal places, right? So it's possible that there is a small push cost, but we can't see it until it adds up and only if we don't recover that cost too quickly. There was also one leg stomp I did. I didn't get it on video, but it seemed to cost me 0.001 as well, even though it did appear to do damage. So finally, there were some clear cases of these small numbers being intentional. So if you stomp the last HP out of a zombie who had only a few points left, uh, the cost of your stomp will be significantly reduced, usually about uh, 002 or 001 points. And more on this later. First, we'll talk about weapons and we'll talk about base costs. So each weapon has a base insurance cost and you pay the full cost every time you miss with that weapon or every time you land a pretty good blow with it. So for example, both Karagam and I found the sledgehammer costs a massive zero, uh, sorry, 0 0.068 points, whereas something like the axe costs only 0 0.009. And really small things like the hammer only cost 0 0.003 or then there's the knife which costs basically nothing. We can explain a bit of these numbers with a little something I'll call the Theory of Karagam, and you can read about it on Karagam's post uh, linked below. It's the idea that a weapon's endurance cost is related to its equipped weapon rate. Now, overall, this is accurate. For example, the axe weighs 0.9 when equipped and it costs 0.009 to swing it. However, this direct relationship doesn't hold true for some items, including heavy items, which are different, like Karagom says, and also using a two-handed weapon in one hand will roughly double its cost. There are also rare oddities like the rolling pin, which has a higher cost than its weight suggests. But generally, smaller weapons do cost less to use, and for most weapons, just add two zeros in front of their weight to find their stamina cost. Now, remember when I said that some stomp and some pushes had slightly modified costs at seemingly random times, the same can sort of be said for weapons. Generally speaking, most of your hits will cost the full cost of the weapon, especially if they deal full or nearly full damage. However, sometimes small damage hits will cost less. Now, damage doesn't totally explain what's going on here because there is some overlap. So for example, I might deal 19 damage with a crowbar at a cost of 0.001 or I might do 15 damage, so less damage for a higher cost of 0 0.003. But there is some consistency here with overkills, that is high damage against a nearly dead Zed, which will cost you much less stamina. Okay, so this leads us to the katana effect. If you watched my DPS video, you know that the katana does insane damage on just about every hit. This means that even if you kill a zombie from full health in one swing, the katana is still using only a very small amount of the actual damage it deals. And it seems that the more leftover damage you have in an overkill, the less endurance your attacks will cost you. This is why you can cut down like 100 zombies without breaking a sweat. Actually, if you did it just by walking, you probably wouldn't even lose any significant endurance at all. So, to sum that up, if you deal small damage, either because the zombie was almost dead already, or because your attack just didn't do well, it's going to cost you less stamina in the end. Or, if you have an overkill weapon, like the katana, you've basically got nothing to worry about endurance. And that's it! I'll throw some quick takeaways at you before you head out. First, remember the overkill. High damage weapons means little endurance used. Also remember that a lower weapon, uh, lower equipped weight on a weapon will generally mean a lower endurance cost. Don't forget that you can slowly recover stamina by walking if you aren't too exhausted. And remember, the absolute, hands down, best way to recover endurance is to pull up a patch of Kentucky's golden grass and watch the sunset. Now, Survivor, if you think other people should see this video, please give it a like or share it with the people that you play with. And if you want to support the channel here and see what's coming up, uh, it's as easy as hitting subscribe and dinging the notification bell. That's it for today, so good luck out there in the end times, and I'll see you in the next video.